Welcome to Church of the Word tonight. Glad to see everybody here. We're going to dismiss the children at this time. We're going to do the bulk of our worship at the end, so look forward to that. I just want to greet somebody beside you, tell them thank you for being here. We love you here. This is a place that you'll see get some freedom. You'll, you'll see some things uh, roll off of your shoulders. You'll get free here in Jesus' name. This is where the glory of God is. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. So good to see everyone tonight. Well, welcome to Church of the Word. I'll go over the announcements. We will have prayer meeting on Monday from noon to 1, and also Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning from 6 to 7. And it's an awesome time. I actually made it one morning this week, and I, I encourage everybody to come if they can. It's good. We have Bible study Tuesday evening at 7.30, and... The kids are already dismissed, so we don't need that one. Um, for those in leadership training school, LTS class will be tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 3 here at church. And if there is anyone desiring to be baptized, we are offering a special baptism service for those interested. Ask Lene for more details. She's over here. And so next Saturday morning on April 1st, we need some men to help with cleanup at church, starting at 8 o'clock. Contact Eugene for details or to let him know if you'll be coming. And Eugene is actually upstairs, I believe, but you can talk to him afterwards. On Resurrection Sunday, we will be having, having su a Sunday morning service from 8.30 to 10. That's on April 9th. That will be our only service that weekend, so there's no Saturday night service on April 8th. So, no Saturday night service on April 8th, the Saturday evening before Resurrection Sunday or Easter. Well, hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. I have a testimony to share tonight So, about the goodness of God and about tithing. Praise God. First, let's go to scripture. Um, Malachi 3. I like this scripture. And it, praise God. Malachi 3. I um, guess before I 100% go there, does anybody need an offering envelope? If you do, raise your hand and Jared will run you on. But I'm going to start in verse 13. Malachi 3.13 says, Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, What have we spoken so much against thee? You have said, It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we walk mournfully before the Lord of hosts? You know, how many times, I mean, for me, I've, over the years, I've tithed and tithed and given and tithed. And you know, sometimes it, you know, if we're careful, doubts can rise and we're like, what does it profit? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we don't know what, it do, what it's done. <clears throat> Praise God. You know, and then we go back to 10, or verse 11, I guess is what I want to focus on, is, what, is a promise of, a, of our tithe. It says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. You know, when we tithe, we don't have to get up every day and rebuke the devourer, because God does it for us. Praise God. And the testimony is that we have, is part of this, is that we had a Suburban that we bought six years ago and drove, put about 50,000 miles on it, and we traded it off this last week. Thank God, updated, it's time for that thing to go. <laughs> and we didn't know how quick it should go. <laughs> so we traded it off, and I, after the, couple days after that, it was like, you know, I was kind of kicking myself because I didn't quite get the deal I wanted, you know, and I felt like I maybe paid out too much, but so I called the dealer this last week because he's supposed to send me a part, and I'm still believing it's going to show up, but then uh, he told me, yeah, you know, they drove it the next day, and it was fine, and then they sold it, and those people drove it off, and the tranny blew up. I was like, what? And he's like, you know, thank, thankfully, it's not that big of a deal because it was a parts, you know, parts 
dealer. I guess he bought the car for parts. So I was glad it wasn't, you know, some needy family, you know. That, <laughs> that would have made me feel even bad because we didn't know. I mean, you know, definitely had issues. It was used, but I would have trusted in it bringing us back. So, <laughs> so to me, I mean, and then my memory started jolting, like, when we bought it from her cousin, and uh, he, th- he was talking about transmission not being 100%. I don't, I can't remember exactly. I know we had the conversation. He was telling me about a, it was in Missouri, that, of a transmission shop. They do a good job for a pretty decent rate and yada, yada. And like, well, he was like, boy, I hope we don't have to replace the tranny. Well, we didn't have to either. <laughs> we drove that thing for six years. <laughs> and, we'd, and it got out from under us and boom. <laughs> so to me, that's just a, a confirmation, a testimony that his word works. You know, sometimes, you know, we might be tithing and tithing and not seeing nothing, but there's some things happening that we don't see. Praise God. So, I thought it was awesome. I'd share it with y'all. So, praise God. Um, so, if y'all don't want to stand up, we're going to gather the tithes and offerings. Um, I'm going to... Uh, Sorry, I'm being a little. I'm going to read the declaration that we've been declaring for the last couple weeks or month. Um, I got written on top here is pray over CWI for loans paid in full. When I pray this and speak this out is over the CWI's personal loan on the building and plus for each one of you, if you all believe with me, our, our debts are paid in full. We decree you begin to receiving divine and unexpected financial provision to meet every need. We say that debts and deficits are removed and bills are paid on time every time. We speak that there is financial peace in your life and what has been lacking begins to be filled and supplied. We declare that increase begins to surround your life long term and we declare a settling of all financial problems and issues. We say you receive gainful employment and stable income for your work. In Jesus' name, we bind the enemy's power to create excess breakdowns and repairs causing expenses that rob your resources. Hallelujah. We declare financial provision comes now. Thank you, Lord. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for these promises. Thank you for your word. That your word works, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bob, you don't run away. You stay right here. <laughs> Bob likes to do that. He likes to run off, doesn't he? Um, no, he's just a very... I'm so privileged to be able to serve with him. And I, it's an honor... Uh, for me to travel together. When I first met Bob, I would have never imagined that I would be able to go on a mission trip. So I'm just I'm honored to go, and uh, I'm just going to turn the time over to you, and uh, we're going to uh, finish up with worship. So glory to God. Let the glory of God pour on this place. 7-16. Um, when you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good evening. How are you all doing? It's good to be back. And this, uh, see, Jay, Jay knew I needed all the help I could get. See that? <laughs> he, he called me up this afternoon and wondered if I was able to make the day all by myself. I said, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing what praising can do. Amen. How about you all just stand up on your feet? I got some things in my heart. I felt the Lord to wanted to minister to you as His precious ones. And uh, I don't want to miss what God's doing. So just don't get nervous in the presence of the Lord. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I want to thank You for the blood of Jesus Christ. 
thank you that you bought me that my body and my spirit are yours. I thank you that the entrance of your word brings light, illumination, revelation into me. I thank you, Lord. My mind is being renewed. I am being restored. I am being strengthened with might by your Spirit each step of the way. Thank you, Father. You've called me, anointed me, and appointed me for this day and this hour. Thank you, Father, for your grace that's sufficient for me to run the race that you've called me to. I give you praise that my eyes are anointed to see, my ears are anointed to hear, my heart is prepared to receive all that the Holy Spirit has for me tonight and every day. Father, I give you praise, I honor you, and I thank you. Your goodness, your mercy have found me. They've captured me. They've been following me long enough. Now they've caught up to me. And I just want to thank you for that. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now, okay, how about you tell me that you're the head and not the tail? That you're above and not beneath? That you've been set free, you've been delivered, and you're walking in victory. How about you tell me, and we tell the devil tonight, that he is a defeated foe. That he is, he is conquered, he is spoiled, and he is worthless. Has no place in me, no place in my affairs, no place in my marriage, in my home, upon my children. I thank you, Father, that you have sent Jesus and he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a rule over them and conquered them. Therefore, I join in with the total victory that the devil is under my feet. He has no place in my life. I am a child of God. A joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm called, anointed, and appointed for this day and for this hour. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. I honor you. I thank you for the privilege to serve you with all my heart, all my soul, all my might. Thank you, Lord. Make it clear to me so that I'm not deceived in this day and in this hour. I receive the spirit of truth. I will not receive the spirit of error. As we move forward, as I move forward, I will not be deceived. I will not be deceived. I am full of the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who you are, church. Don't you let that devil tell you another thing. Don't you let people talk you out of the victory that you have in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. If you have a piece of tape somewhere in this church, if you give it to me, I will tape this thing to my chin. <clears throat> I usually bring my own mic with me, but... Uh, <clears throat> Because I'm jumping ship in Chicago to head back to Erie, uh, I thought it probably wouldn't be a good idea. Because then I'd be leaving it with you and you'd have my mic and I wouldn't have it. <laughs> I'd have to come back and get it. Just another excuse, huh? I, you know, years ago I, uh, I fell in love with this couple and their family and uh, I'm just so, so thankful to serve the Lord with them. And with you, church, I'm just so grateful that 
you receive me and the ministry in which God's called me to, I am so grateful for that. I just, you know, before I blow up <coughs> here in a few minutes, I just want you to know that I'm grateful to be a part of this great family and your life. God bless you. Let's open our Bibles up, if we would, please. Pastor Jay's been teaching on the glory of God, they, he's told me. And uh, by what, uh, I'm going to kind of shift some gears, but it still doesn't take away from what God is speaking to you about the glory of God. I want you to see the manifestations of his glory as the way God manifests himself in each one of our lives. And it looks different in every one of our lives. But there are very thing, there are some things that are very similar. I want you to start expecting, especially in the season in which you and I are called to, and you were, you were born for such a time as this, you know that. You're not a mistake. You're right on time. Can you say amen to that? So, as we look at the glory of God and as we go through the Scriptures this evening, I want you to see in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, if you would please, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, one of the purposes of God's presence, of His glory, <coughs> is to prepare you, to shift you, to rearrange you, to change you. When I speak of you, I'm talking about me too. All right, we're in this together. To come in to a image that is beyond ourselves into a spiritual life in Christ so that people see the true Jesus in you. Do you understand me? That has nothing to do with religion. Because why? Religion will destroy people. Uh, you know, don't say, well, he's down on religion. No, I'm not down on religion. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is truth. I want you to understand that he said you would know the truth and the truth would make you free. So, religion can put bondage on you, can tie you up, can hold you back from the potential, from the call, from the purposes that God has upon your life. See, there's a Christ in you. The Bible says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Well, understand, God wants you to walk in the glory. He wants you to experience the glory. But He wants the glory to do one thing in you. And that's where I want, I want to hit this in a different way up the mountain is in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Say liberty. Okay, now, where is the Spirit of the Lord if you've asked Him to fill you with His Spirit? It would be in you, is that correct? I mean, we, we welcome the Holy Spirit here, but brother and sister, He came with you. <laughs> All right? And that's, that's the decision of your will. And when we come together, guess what? There's a greater manifestation of His Spirit when we walk in peace, harmony, and in love with each other. Can you shout amen to that? We're in agreement with each other. The, you know, <clears throat> the pastor said, are you in agreement with Him? Show us your glory, Lord. Well, guess what? The glory's already come. The same glory, according to John 17, that Jesus <clears throat> walked in is in you. Can you say amen? So in other words... When you come through and we joined our hearts together, our faith together, and we brought the glory of God in. But see, if we don't allow the glory of God to do the first thing, you understand there's always priorities in the Spirit. There's always things that God wants. It's seek ye three time, or third the kingdom of God 
and his way of doing things, and he'll add things. To, is that what it said? It didn't say that, did it? Uh, you guys are sharp. Seek what first? So that's evidently one of the major priorities. Is that right? So if we understand that, which I know we do, we, we have to look at it and say, all right, God, you said seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things or his righteousness, and all those things will be added to you. I mean, that that's, sounds like total prosperity to me. How about you? Do you know he doesn't hold any good thing back from you? Do you know he has a full supply for every one of us? Do you know he's not broke? <laughs> amen. <laughs> and he never will be. Could you say amen to that? Do you know that uh, it's his will that you would prosper and be in health as your souls are prospering? Do you know that God's for you and he's not against you? Do you know that, I, I know you know this because I sat in a conference here not too long ago, that he's totally head over heels in love with all of you. Yeah. So stop talking him out of it. Can you say amen? Stop beating the snot out of yourself. All right, the devil tries to do that enough to us. There's therefore now no condemnation to who? Those that are in Christ Jesus. Are we in Christ tonight? Amen. So we're, 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 we're here as a believing meeting. I'm not doing an evangelistical crusade here tonight. We're, we're believers. So as we look at the Scripture, now where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Now what does liberty mean? I mean, some translations say freedom. All right. That could say if Jesus said you'd know the truth and the truth would make or set you free, what are some of the things that we need to be free of? One of them is sin. The wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? Now, if we understand that one of the main purposes is we need to be set free of sin so that sin doesn't control us, doesn't manipulate us, and doesn't keep us down from our potential to walk in the will of God. Okay, how about sickness and disease. Have you ever read a scripture? Maybe, maybe you read this one in Psalm 107 verse 20. He said, He sent His Word and healed us and delivered us from our destruction. Then Isaiah 53, the prophet Isaiah was, was prophesying about the coming Messiah and he, he, he mentioned that there would be stripes on His back, therefore by those stripes you would be healed. Is that correct? So, and then after the, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but before they put him on the cross, he took those stripes. And then in, I believe it's Matthew chapter 8, you're going to find out that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Okay, is that correct? Now, if you understand that, then you go jump in to after after Jesus ascended up on high, led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto mankind, we understand that He sent the Holy Spirit to you and me to empower us, to equip us, so that we could be an example of who He is. Can you say amen? An example of who He is. You don't want Bob's example. <laughs> Do you understand me? You want to see Jesus through me. Because Bob can't help you. <laughs> I, I, I'm just being real with you. I, say, I can't help you. But I know one who can. So my goal in life is to be changed in the glory of God so that you're not getting a dose of Bob or Robert or Lawrence or Hawk. All right, you don't want any of that. All right, I'm just giving you. I'm just being real with you. You want a good dose of the Holy Ghost. You want a good dose of the Spirit of Truth. You need a good, a good outpouring of the manifestations of God's goodness and His mercy and His love and His revelation and of His wisdom, of His health and healing. And so, we'll know the truth. The truth will set us free. One of them is from sin. One of them is from sickness and disease, because 1 Peter 2 and 24 said, By His stripes you, is that word were, is that 
present tense or is that past tense? It's past tense. So basically, if we look at this in a, in a proper English matter, we find out that we're already healed. I, I'm trying to get you to see one of the things that the glory of God will do in your life. It'll bring healing. I said it'll bring healing. But you got to let it. Do you understand me? The Spirit of God will quicken your mortal body. Say quicken. That means make, make alive. Are, has anybody here besides me battled some disease or sickness throughout your life? I was born and raised... Uh, in, in a home where my parents smoked and the atmosphere, <laughs> you know, back then I guess it was normal. And I was an asthmatic. And I was in and out, out of the hospital at least twice a year, maybe sometimes more. I remember taking a trip. We went fishing up into Canada. And uh, I was just, I don't know, maybe eight years old. And I had a, you know, an asthmatic attack there. So then these, I think they were doctors. They might have been. Uh, something else but anyhow they, they tried to fix me but see I know what sickness is you understand me I know it can eliminate and hold you back from God's potential in your life I know who brings sickness it's not God can you say amen understanding I think we, we've crossed that bridge we understand that it's God's will that you're whole, that you're well, that you live life, you know, long and strong. Correct? So if we get that, we have to see He took my infirmities, bore my sicknesses, and by His stripes I am healed. So therefore, as He understood, and He wants you and me to understand, that He paid the price for our healing, and then in Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Say soul. soul. You're a triune being. Okay? You're a spirit. Your spirit took on the life and nature of God when you got born again. Or is that correct? Okay. You have an earth suit. You have a body. Okay? You need to take care of it because without that, you're absent. And I don't want any of you absent until you finish your race. Do you understand me? When you've done it all and you're well pleased and it's all over, then that's up to you. All right? But what I am going to say is you need to take care of your suit. All right? But then you got this little rascal called the soul. That's your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. It's your personality. It's the you I get to know when I get to know you. But that's also what takes place in the renewing of the mind because the soul is part of the mind. And I want you to get something. The glory of God wants to enter into your soul in this season. I believe it's Psalm 24. It says, Who would open up your gates and let the King of glory come in? you see that? Open up your heart. Open up every crevice of your life and allow Him to come in. We need to stop letting ourselves and the enemy and circumstances and hurts and pains and rejections and all the things that we've all gone through at some time or another. We need to stop allowing those things to hold us back from total wholeness and wellness and freedom that belongs to us. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. My brother and sister, the Spirit of God is in you. My brother and sister, you have the ability to allow the Holy Spirit to quicken your mortal flesh and to cause health, healing, and a cure. The problem that you will have and that I have had is I got this rascal... It's called war, and that war goes on between my ears. Do you understand me? 
I'm not, you, you understand, I mean, <clears throat> we can blame the devil, but see, if I entertain his thoughts, he's winning. But if I learn how to cast down every thought and imagination that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God by allowing the Word of God to enter in and speaking the Word and allowing that Word to, to build me up above what the devil's trying to do, above what my circumstances are trying to do, above what pain or infirmity is trying to do. Because why? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is... Say all. How much is that? Yeah, you do a word search on that word all, you'll find out that it pretty much means all, all right? It does mean all. So, all that's within me, bless His holy name, who forgives... Oh my. How many? Nah. Really? Yeah. Really. All. He forgives all. And heals how many of our diseases? Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, and by his stripes we were healed. Now, the problem is that your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions connects more to your circumstances your feelings, <laughs> the report of maybe a doctor, <laughs> maybe a generational issue, whatever it might be. But guess what? Jesus said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Who will open up their hearts tonight and let the King of Glory come in to bring transformation into your soul? Is that you? I'm here to help you. You understand me? And it's not that I haven't failed many times. And it's not that I'm trying to, uh, to uh, put condemnation or guilt on you if you're in pain or you're dealing with things. And what I'm trying to get you to see is, you know what? There's been a price paid. And that price was paid for you. That's the love of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? In verse 17, now where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with open face, say open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed. Say changed. See, part of that changing is the changing of the way we think. The renewing of the mind. The transformation of in other words, if we're, if we're in the computer world, we'd need to understand we've got to hit the delete button on some of the religious things we've heard over the years. Some of the <coughs> fairy tales and some of the opinions of other people, we've got to delete it and bring the access of the truth in because it's the truth that makes you and me free, correct? So he says here, he says, Behold, is it is in a glass... The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to what? So it has steps. <laughs> there's one level and then there's more. Have you ever noticed as you've walked with the Lord, as you've served the Lord, as you fellowship with the Lord, that He didn't do everything all at once? <laughs> Did you find out that He's long-suffering with you? Uh, or is this just me? Did you find out that He will open my eyes to my understanding to see character flaws, but He didn't do it all at one time? But as I've served Him, the glory come in and transform me in areas to His image. Have I arrived yet? No, no more than you have. But I'm in the destination. I'm on the right highway. Amen? We're going in the right direction. So, as we understand that God's glory brings transformation, brings change into you, into me, into the body of Christ, to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. Is that correct? Now, 
I've set you up. It had nothing to do with what I was going to tell you. It, but it had everything to do with it. Go with me to 1 John chapter 2. I want to talk about tomorrow uh, the pastor invited me to minister at the, uh, the LTS. And uh, I guess the subject that I'm going to be hitting on is the spiritual man. So if you're an LTS student, and if I can have free freedom, because the Spirit of the Lord's here and he said I'd have freedom, I'll just invite you if you're not. <laughs> All right? And uh, I, 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 I've seen the LTS, what used to be called the MTS program, transform over the years of, of walking in this ministry for a lot of years with uh, Brother Dale. And uh, I've seen it transform lives, change lives, equip people, and raise up people into the will and call and purposes of God time and time and time again. So I believe in the, in the structure of it. I believe that everybody ought to take it, you understand me? And that doesn't mean you have to be called in the ministry, you know, in, in the so-called five-fold ministry. But that means, you know what, I want to be a more equipped believer. Is that correct? So now, as, as I go through this tonight and... I'll try not to wear you out, but I want to give you enough, and then those of you that will be here tomorrow at 1, I believe we're going to pick up on that because we have to understand the spiritual man, that you and I are spiritual beings, and that we can walk in a dimension of, of being spiritual as we overcome because we're being changed by the glory of the Lord and we're going from glory to glory, we're having our minds renewed on a daily basis, we're being transformed on a daily basis and we become a brighter, more, more, more influence of who God, the Lord Jesus Christ is in our everyday activities, in our everyday life in our marriages, in our homes, with our children, our grandchildren. And I just had number four the other day. I didn't have it. <laughs> my <laughs> The wife of my, one, of, of, uh, my grandson had it, so I got four great-grandchildren. Glory to God. How did I get this old, brother? I don't know. There's certain things that you're not in control of, church. <laughs> just for those of you that have questioned that at times. Anyhow, 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, if you would please. Called to purpose. Say, I am called of God for divine purpose. Lord, open my eyes to see and to understand the purpose that you've called me to. Amen. See, a lot of people go through life and they've never entered in to the true purposes of God in their life. They've been smothered. They've been talked out of it. Fear, the devil, other people have held them back. My friend, you and I, you know, I'm not here to scare you, but we are a last day's generation. He is coming back. You understand me? If I don't see it, I'll be surprised. But I can guarantee you some of those four great-grandchildren of mine, they probably will. You understand me? So I want to impart into God's church as much as I possibly can for the transformation by the glory of God to take place in their life so that the reflection that they give in their everyday affairs will be a reflection of the true Jesus. Whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in raising children, whether it's in business, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in playing baseball or going out and playing hockey. I mean the hockey, the hockey rink, the ice rink, it needs to see Jesus on skates. Can you say amen? Is that right, brother? <laughs> amen. <laughs> in other words, that is taking ministry beyond what we call ministry when we gather as a congregation. Because ministry is far beyond just 
uh, you know, our, our church gatherings. You are able ministers of this gospel in so many different dimensions of life. Don't underestimate what God wants to do in you and through you to touch the lives of people because of the reflection of the image of Jesus Christ in which you represent, which you carry by the purposes of the glory of God changing you, going from glory to glory. Can you shout amen? amen. So, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, it says, The world passes away, the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides how often? Amen. Forever. And then in the Amplified, it says, And the world passes away and disappears, and with it the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. But, the, but he who does the will of God and carries out his purpose. Say, I will carry out his purpose. All right. It says he carries out his purpose in his life. He abides, he remains forever. Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I know you know these scriptures. I know I've probably even shared some of them with you other times. But I know that we are in a season of time when Jesus Christ wants to manifest Himself through your life. He not only wants to show up with the glory of God in our services, that's part of His will, but He wants to show up in the shopping center. <laughs> he wants to show, show up in the workhouse, in the workplace. He wants to show up in the living room, in the classroom, in the schoolroom. He wants to show up in every, every mountaintop of influence. And how is he going to do that? Because you're allowing him to bring his glory into your life and to manifest that and to take you from one level of glory into the other. And when I speak of glory, a simple definition is the way God manifests himself in various ways. Are you with me? In other words, God wants to manifest himself in you, to you, and through you. Does that make sense to you? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice forevermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the what? The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? Now this is a letter to the church, correct? It says, quench not the Spirit, Despise not prophesy, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from the appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you. That word sanctify meaning set apart for holy purposes. Sanctify you wholly, I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved how blameless. A better translation would be, be, be sound and complete, found blameless. See, that's the will of God concerning you and me. That we would be preserved, we would be sound, we would be complete, and we would be found blameless. Can you say an amen to that? So, in, in this, in the King James, it says, Preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, verse 24, faithful is He that called you, say that'd be me, who also will do it. Who's going to do it? God's going to do it. And the cool thing, how He does it, is by manifesting His glory, by you allowing the King of glory to come in to your life, to other and every dimension of your life. Every every. Every part of your heart, church, in your emotions, in your soul, in your thinking. Do you, do you understand me? I'm, I'm trying to teach tonight. I, 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 there's a different anointing this evening. And I, I want you to see something. There's a transformation taking place in the body of Christ that is preparing our generation right now to radiate with the reflection of heaven so that the glory of God can be manifested upon this earth 
so that the harvest of souls, that's one of the keys, the harvest of souls comes out of darkness into light. It's not just going to happen in the church house or in meetings. It's going to happen through men and women just like you and me that are doing life, walking in the fullness of His Spirit, walking in the fullness of the glory of God by allowing the King of Glory to come in and to bring the transformation and the change into our everyday lives so that His reflection is seen in visible ways everywhere we go and in everything we do. My brother and sister, that's what God is calling you to. <laughs> do you understand me? I want you to get this. It's like, well, you know, maybe you're called to be an apostle or prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, or an entrepreneur, a businessman, or, or whatever. But no, see, you're called to be an ambassador. <laughs> a representation of the King of glory. And He lives in you. Say, He lives in me. Say, He lives big in me. He's got full right, total access to every part of my life. Amen. So He says, Faithful is He that called you who also will do it. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, being confident, the Apostle Paul says to the church at Philippi, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you. Now think about it. When you first said, Jesus, I received you. Come into my heart. When you were first born again. I don't know about you, the grass was green that day. I mean, I'm certain it was green before, but to me it wasn't. The sky was blue and beautiful. It could have been raining and storming. It wouldn't have mattered. I was in love for the first time in my life to a degree that I never understood. I was in love with Him, and I, I fell in love with people that some of them I didn't even like. Because why? The King of Glory come in and He begun a good work in me. And I know that you and I, we all have testimonies of that experience of the new birth, of the transformation, that you became a, a new creation in Christ. Old things were passed away and behold, all things become new. And you become to a, a, a child of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You become transformed. You had the heart of God now. You were no longer a sinner. You became a saint. You were totally forgiven and totally accepted in the Beloved because of what Jesus Christ did. You were set free and you were born again. You were born from above. And we, we all understand that was a good work and that was the beginning of this walk. Is that correct? Now, the process is your spirit man was perfect. Your body might have needed some work. I don't know. I'm not here to, to uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe some of you, maybe you dropped 20 pounds when you got born again, or maybe you gained 50. I don't know. Whatever took place, I don't think that probably happened. But it could have, all right? We don't want to underestimate what God will do. But the problem lied between your ears and mine. Our soul needed to be transformed so that we could allow our thinking to line up with God's thinking so that we could be in agreement with the way He sees things, the way He does things, and the way He wants to operate in this life, in you and through you. Correct? So, He says, being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, in the Amplified says, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Now, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, have you have always, <coughs> always obeyed, not as in my presence only, Paul speaking, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. Huh. 
you mean I have a part to pay or play in working out my salvation? Yes. If you break that word salvation down, you're going to find out it means sozo in the, in the Greek. You're going to find out that that's basically it's the all-inclusive word of the New Testament. And if I can say that, it means that's not just your ticket to heaven, but thank God it is. But also it's your deliverance, it's your wholeness, it's your health, it's your healing, it's your safety. In other words, it's, it's God's package for you, but there's things that you and I have to work through, and the thing that we're working through is the transformation of the way we see, the way we think, and the way we act and react. Because our soul has taken, has taken a, 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 a place in our life, you know, in the beginning especially. And as, when it has taken a place in our life where we're controlled by emotions, by circumstances, by opinions. That's probably none of you. I'm probably in the wrong church tonight, speaking the wrong message, right? This is not a time to walk by emotions. Do you understand me? Because there's plenty of, but they, they're subject to change. This is a time to walk in the Spirit. This is a time to be a spiritual man and woman. Understanding that you can be strong in the Spirit as you allow the glory of God to transform and to change your heart, your, your, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So that you come into con contact with the true will of God. That good, acceptable, and perfect, Paul said in, in Romans 12. That you would know what is His will in your life, for your life, so that you would be able to minister on the level of the will of God, not on the level of, word, of world circumstances, <laughs> not in the level of popular opinions, not on the level of what the government's doing or what they're not doing, not on the level of pain and stress and torment and anxiety and fear and all those things that we have to deal with, but there's a level of truth when we minister by the Spirit that sets people free because you are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ called, anointed, appointed, to speak the truth into the hearts of humanity and to reveal the truth by your character, <laughs> by your emotions, by, by, by your personality. And those in some of our lives, and I've been a work in progress for a lot of years, and he's still working on me. Is anyone here done yet? Uh, have you a finished project? Well, I'm not. So that means I've got a ways to go. So praise God. But the cool thing is, are we going to let him transform us more? Because, see, that's where the glory of God is going to show up in higher levels of manifestations than any generation has ever seen because he saved the best to last. Do you understand me? And what I'm talking about is the church of this day and of this hour. This church, I mean, thank God for the glory of the latter house. But I guarantee you, the glory of this house is going to be greater than any glory of past houses. And when I mean the house, I'm talking about the church. And when I talk about the church, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Spirit of God. Because where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty, there's freedom. There's a place in you and in me where the glory of God comes in. And we're changed into the same image of who Jesus Christ is. And this world will see the true Jesus. They won't receive, they won't see the religion religious thing. They'll see the true Jesus and that'll come forth with power and demonstration, with gifts, with wisdom, with revelation, with the things that are needed for the society in which we're walking in. Because why? People need to know that there's a Jesus and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he's not a God that changes. He's not a God that lies. But when he speaks truth, and when he speaks truth to you, and then he speaks truth through you, the truth will set people free, will bring them and out of captivity into a place of freedom.
freedom and liberty into the, into the presence of God because you're his ambassador's church. Can you say amen to that? Wherefore, my beloved, if you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Huh. Is that right? Yes. Amplified in 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 says, Faithful is he who is calling you to himself. So many Christians, good people, want to do great and mighty exploits for him. And that's awesome. But the main priority is allowing him to do in you what needs done before you try to go for him. Because you'll enter into works. You'll never experience the total freedom that comes with the grace of God. And I can guarantee you, you'll get weary and well-doing and you'll faint before you get your face, your race finished. And this ain't a time to faint. Don't be weary in well-doing. Understand that you and I were called to him. And when we're with him, then we understand the will of God so that we can go for him. Are you okay? I'm going to finish up here shortly. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I know you know these scriptures, I just want to encourage you, uh, you, you know, I thought, Lord, when I, when I was hanging out with him today, and I was to him, and, you know, I'm thinking, well, just a fiery message tonight, and fire you all up, and then we'll just blow out of here, and uh, that's not what he was saying, because he's going to show you his glory. But you're going to be a container individually and corporately that will hold the glory of God. So it isn't just a one-time experience. And what I mean by that, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of living, going from glory to glory and manifesting the glory of God, manifesting the wisdom of God, manifesting the counsel of God, manifesting the power of God, manifesting the love of God, etc., etc., etc. You'll find Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our what? Weaknesses, infirmities. How about if I said a lot of your weaknesses, a lot of my weaknesses that we've gathered in, in life are no more than just stupid thinking. Fear. Being intimidated, being self-condemned, living in a failure mentality, living living with a with a spirit of rejection, and the list goes on. Those are infirmities that are holding you back from the will of God, from the call of God, from the purposes of God, from you enjoying a relationship with the King of glory and allowing the King of glory to radiate and to shine through you to a higher level so that this world can truly see Jesus Christ through His church. Amen? Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what in the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession, say intercession, 
for the saints, say that'd be me, and that'd be you, according to the what? Huh. So in other words, you know, we in Pentecost, we say, yeah, you pray in tongues, well, that's part of it. You pray in the Word, that's part of it. Because the Spirit and the Word agree, all right? Understanding that we, 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 there's a groaning in the Spirit. You know, Jesus groaned at the, at the tomb of Lazarus. There's a groaning in the Spirit that is, uh, is coming from our spirit man, bringing a transformation that will produce power. Because why? God's Holy Spirit upon your spirit, within your spirit, wants to help you overcome your weaknesses, your infirmities, those, those, those things that we've accumulated or let into our lives, whether it's by you know, problems or heartache or shipwreck or whatever you've gone through in life, you know, if you've been divorced or if you've had a bad marriage or whatever, whatever's taken place, my brother and sister. Maybe you've been abused. I don't know. But what I am saying is God wants to bring you into total wholeness. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. There's freedom from sickness, from pain, from infirmity. I want you to see that. Where you let, where I let, where we let, the Spirit of God come in, to that degree, infirmity has got to go. Weakness has got to go. Fear has got to go. Destruction, famine, poverty, lack, doubt, unbelief, it's got to go. But who will let the King of glory come in? Will that be you? Will that be us? See, I believe I'm in the right church. I believe that God has put His hand upon this church, called this church, not only to invite the King of Glory in, but to, to absolutely allow the King of Glory to do in you individually and then through you corporately to bring change, to bring transformation, and to be a hub of what I believe God wants to do through this region as well as touching nations. Are you with me? See, the call on this house, if God has joined your heart to this house, I can guarantee you the call is not just a local church. It's bigger than that. I mean, God bless the local church. That's a part of it. But we've got to understand there's a world that Jesus Christ wants us to be able to affect by the glory of God. Some of us will just pray. Some of us will pay. And some of us will do or go. But I want you to know it's cool when he says, you know what? You can do it all. Can you say amen? Say, I can do it all. Amen. Verse 28. I've heard the scriptures preached so much out of text. <clears throat> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And that's where they stop. So you mean that cancer worked good for them? That's not what the scriptures say. You mean to say that that, 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 that that child that was molested, that that's working good for them? No. That's the work of the devil. Are you with me? I want to get your attention tonight because why? God is leading this church into a place of higher glory, manifestations of glory, so that there can be an outpouring of His glory in you, upon you, and through you, so that this region will be touched by the manifestations of the glory of God, and the harvest will come out of darkness into light, because God is still in love with this world. Could you say amen to that? He said, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Say, I love. Yeah. All right, now if you love God, you obey Him. So if you're not obeying him, you better check up on your love to him. Boy, that's hard preaching, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. So in other words, what the glory of God will do, it will open up our eyes to see where we're not obeying him. Boy, 
it's quiet in this house tonight. I love you. I hope you know that. Do you understand me? All things work together for good to them that love God. And what? Them who are what? According to his what? Now, scriptures that we went over were talking about the purposes of God, the will of God. God's will is his purpose. Are you with me? Now, as we break down and we go into this, I want you to see the main purpose. Because if you don't see that, I've just wasted my time with you, and I don't want to do that. You're, you're too precious to do that. Your time's too valuable. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the what? Of who? Huh. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he called. And whom he called, them he justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also, say also, freely give us how much? You mean God's generous? Yeah. Very. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather is risen again, even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us. So you've got an intercessor sitting at the right hand of God, ever living to make intercession for you so your faith doesn't fail, so that you connect with his purpose, with his glory, with his will, so that you're transformed to be back up into, in, to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. Where are you headed? To the image of Jesus Christ. What do I see? I see Christ in you the hope of glory. And the glory of God is what will bring change, transformation. It will take you from one level of glory into another and understanding that God wants you to start experiencing His glory by the allowing the King of glory to come in and to bring a transformation that takes place by the entrance of His Word, by the renewing of the mind and bringing you into a place where His thoughts are your thoughts. His ways are your ways. That there's no disconnect where there's a, an absolute total willingness and obedience to do the will of God, to walk into the spirit man, to walk into the spirit nature, and not allowing your flesh, your circumstances, the opinions of other people, world events, or anything else that's taken place, that you're not given to a spirit of fear, but you've got power, you have love, you are of a sound mind, you're of a disciplined mind, because you are a walker, and you're walking in the spirit, not fulfilling the love of the flesh, your spirit man has risen up to another level of the glory of God and people are experiencing the same spirit that raised Christ up from the dead in your life. In other words, they're seeing the power of God in everything you touch, everything you do. They're seeing the wisdom and the counsel of God in everywhere you go. Every time you open your mouth up, any door you walk through, people are going to experience the King of Glory because you're the containers of the King of Glory. And the way we contain more of Him is a lot Allowing the transformation to take place in our everyday lives by understanding I'm called to him because he 
has started a good work in me, and he wants to bring it to a conclusion. And in that conclusion is for the last days so that the glory of God can be poured out upon the earth through the people of God and be manifested in every area of life experiences. Because why, my brother and sister, if you're waiting for them to come in here to get saved, you're missing what a call of God. Because the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Who's called to preach the gospel? You and I are called to preach the gospel. You might preach it a little different than I do, and that's okay. But people are looking for the real deal. They're looking for the real Jesus. They're looking for someone that's taken time in the presence of God and has lost themselves. They've been crucified with Christ. It's not them that are living any longer, but it's Christ that's living in them. And the people are seeing the experience of the God of glory manifesting through a man and woman just like you and me to a degree where that glory shows up. The manifestations of the power of God shows up. Because why? You've allowed the King of glory to enter into your heart, into your life, into your mind, into your will, into your emotions, into your thinking, and to a degree where it's no longer you and me, but it's Jesus Christ. He is the King of glory. I'm going to read on and then I'm going to close and let the worship team come up. We're going to just love Jesus together. I want you tonight, open up your heart as we worship together, allowing the glory of God because it's here. I, I said it's here. It's in you. It's in me. It's in us. Allow it to bring the change in you that needs to be done tonight. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But allow him to do in you tonight everything that needs done so that your life can be a greater reflection of him. Will you do that? I'll show you the things that stop it. Let's read on. Let me just look at verse... Who is he that condemneth? Verse 34, it is, it is Christ that died, yet rather is risen again, even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep to the slaughter. No! King James says, nay. Say no. In all, say all, these things we are what? More than. You're not just a conqueror, you're more than. Because why? He's already conquered. You enter into the victory. So, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, life, Angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus the Lord. Now, the two things that are not mentioned, and you probably already know these, but faith don't come because we have heard. I want you to hear it tonight because it'll stop you. It'll stop me. It will stop us. It will stop this church. If you'll notice through all the things that are mentioned, your past isn't mentioned because it can keep you back from the love of God. Do you see that? Now the other one is yourself. Any other creature but you you or me can stop the love of God. Our past, if we allow it in our thinking, can stop the love of God from manifesting in our life. Because as He is, so are you and me in this world. We're at in this world. He is love. Love never fails. 
And the love of God has been shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit. And God is head over heels and totally in love with you, each and every one of you. He's not holding anything back from any one of us. And what stops it, if we allow it, is the way we think about our past or the way we live in our past and don't experience our now or our self. My brother and sister, if you've never forgiven yourself for your failures, for the things that maybe you've done and you knew better and you did them anyhow, or maybe you've never forgiven yourself and said, you know what, I should have I jumped in and did the will of God years ago. It's water under the bridge. It's over. It's okay. But today, you make a decision. And don't let guilt and shame, condemnation, pain, infirmities hold you back from entering into the fullness of God's will for your life. And his perfect will for you and for me, it's all the same, is that we would reflect his image. And the way he will reflect his image is by his glory. And that glory can manifest in various ways. Will you allow that? I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you the entrance of your word tonight has brought in each and every one of us the revelation that is needed for the day and the hour at hand. I thank you, Father, that you're preparing this house. You're preparing each and every man, woman, boy, and girl at the sound of my voice. That You're equipping them and you're imparting into them. You're doing what needs to be done for this hour, for this day. Lord, that the image of Jesus Christ will shine, will radiate, and the glory of God will be seen in them, th through them, and manifest all around them everywhere they go. Lord, I thank you for that transformation that is taking place. I thank you, Lord, that you're affecting their mind, their will, and their emotions even tonight. And Lord, you're delivering them from the powers of hell itself, from the destruction of what the enemy has tried to do, from anything that has tried to kill, steal, or to destroy them. Lord, I speak freedom and liberty over this congregation, over this church, over the pastor, over the leadership, over every man, woman, boy, and girl, over marriages here, over businesses here, ministries here. Lord, I give you praise right now that the Spirit of the Lord is within them, and that Spirit is working and operating, bringing them into freedom, into liberty, and into the fullness of the Holy Spirit so that they can be the example of who Jesus Christ is in the earth. Father, I bless you for this house. I bless you for my family here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, his promise, his promises never fail. He's not the problem. Father, we just thank you tonight that you, you're never going to fail us and that we can continue to tap in to what you have for us. And Father, tonight, as the glory that was on Jesus, that you revealed through Jesus, that Jesus revealed and gave to us, and as we carry it to wherever we go, whatever we're doing, wherever we're going, that we reveal your glory, Lord. Father, I thank you for that opportunity tonight that these people as they leave, that they carry your glory to a greater degree, that the anointing rises in them. The anointing is, is on another level, that uh, as they minister, as they talk, as they walk the walk, that they show your glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I am your God. Don't shove me away, but take hold of my hand. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, but I will make amends with everyone if they come to me, and they will no way be cast out by me, but I am your God, and you are my people, so come to me and be close and love me with all your heart, and I love you already. 
So put your hand in the hand of the man, which is Jesus Christ, and he is my son, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give it all to you. We give it all to you. I give everything to you. There will be new doors opportunity for many here even this evening. Doors that he's already gone before you, doors that he's already prepared and he's opened. By the steps of your willingness and your obedience, you're going to taste and see that how good the Lord is. There's a dimension of his goodness that many have not experienced yet. But this is your season, this is your day, and this is your hour to walk in by willingness and obedience so that you will not only eat the good, you'll taste the good, you'll see the good, and you'll distribute, distribute the good of what the Lord has done within you and that he will do through you. So expect favor to go before you. Put your expectation that the favor of God is upon you, is within you, and will open doors before you like you've never seen before. New things, new experiences, and greater glory awaits each and every one. Expectation is the foundation of seeing something by faith. If you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. If you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. You're going to hit nothing. So expect. Hallelujah. A lot of us don't expect because we don't want the letdown. And that's just the lie of the enemy to keep us from getting our expectations to where it needs to be. Expect your healing. Expect your breakthrough. Expect those things. Hallelujah. 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 Well, one way we love God is by loving one another. I love you. I'll see most of you. Some of you on Monday and the rest of you uh, after the 14th. We're going to bring heaven to wherever the sole of our foot treads, Bob. We're going to bring heaven. And it's a pleasure to, to do kingdom business with you. Glory to God. You're dismissed. I love you.